Welcome to day 20 of our study through the Bible here in Community on YouTube. We're going to be in Genesis 16 from our assignment yesterday. If you want to go back to day 1, you can go in the cards or the description down below and you can find the playlist study through the Bible and you can join us there. This is People of the Free Gift where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and kick, click that subscribe button so, so you don't miss any future content studying through the Bible and community here on YouTube. So yesterday's assignment, day 20, read Genesis 16. And there are four main characters in this chapter. List what you learn about Sarai, Abram, Hagar, and Ishmael, and note Abram's age. So let's go ahead and jump right in, Genesis 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray you, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Now we saw in the previous chapter that God had a conversation with Abram in which Abram was ex expressing frustration. You promised me all these children. I'm old now, and I'm getting old, and I have no children. And my, and my heir stands to be my servant who was born in my house. And God says, no, he's going to come from your loins, okay? And so now more time goes by, and Sarai is saying, well, maybe the problem is me. Maybe I'm not a part of this equation. And so, you, you know, God made the promise to you, but maybe I'm the problem here, and I'm standing in your way. So... Go ahead and go into my handmaiden, and she can raise children up for me. And then Abram, he's kind of still in that mindset. He's frustrated, and he doesn't know how God's promise is going to come to fruition. And maybe he has to accept it as much as he loves Sarah. He says, maybe he says, maybe that is it. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. And so he does it. And Sarah took Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid. The Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So this is the inevitable, and uh, this is one of those things. Uh, every time that polygamy is mentioned, or that there's infidelity mentioned, or there's you know like understood you know arrangements mentioned in terms of marriage, interesting you know arrangements, it's always portrayed in a negative way. So some people have asked, you know, why doesn't God condemn polygamy in the Bible? Well, he did in relation to kings. He says, don't multiply wives. And in a way, you could say, one, that the two shall become one flesh, one man, one woman. Okay, and that's the, the design. That's the pattern. But every time that it deviates from that, it's never a good thing. No matter what Sister Wives or whatever show in, in modern culture tries to tell you, when you try and step outside of God's boundaries for marriage and it's planned for marriage, it doesn't work right. So I just want to point that out here. So, you know, Sarah, Sarah comes up with the plan. Hey, marry my, my handmaid and maybe she can give you children. Abram, okay. And then he goes in, has a kid with Hagar and now... She, Sarah is just glaring at her, despising her, and jealous of her because what she couldn't provide for Abram. Now this woman has with Abram this kind of intimacy and relationship she has with her husband. Okay, so that's what's going on here now. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into your bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and you. And but Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, I made it in, in, in the hand due to her as it pleaseth you. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. The angel of the Lord. I believe this is the first time we've encountered this guy. And uh, we're going to encounter him a few times hence. And I believe if you take all of the passages that speak about this angel of the Lord, I think that there is no other conclusion to come to then it is a, a, a way of speaking of an incarnate manifestation of Jesus, the second person in the Trinity in the Old Testament. So I want to know what you think about that. Let me know in the comments down below. And he said, 
Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou, and where are you going? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply your seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. But the, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, you are a child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard your affliction, he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Okay, so who claims to be the modern-day descendants of, the, of Ishmael? If you know the answer, you know that even if that claim is not legitimate, you know that this is still a thorn in the descendants of Abram's side. To this day, it's still a thorn in their side because he did not trust that God was able to provide and carry through on his promises. That And he, he's not learning his lesson yet. He, he didn't trust him with, with Sarah in Egypt. He didn't trust him, you know, with uh, giving a birth and trusting that Sarah and, and he are going to have children. And so now you have Ishmael, you have Hagar. God blesses her, blesses her descendants, but not in the same way as the Messianic one. Okay. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked upon him that seeth me? Okay. <laughs> the one who sees me. There you see that on the screen? El Roy. Okay. The name of God, the one who sees me. And so they, she sees the angel of the Lord and says, Have I seen the one who sees me? And so that's another one of those cases for the angel of the Lord being Jesus in the Old Testament and that the Jesus is God in the Old Testament. Wherefore the well was called Beer the High Roy. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Barad. Now, uh, notice that's going to come in Beer, Beer the High Roy, okay, the well of living water. Now, that's going to be a, a, a phrase that you're going to want to remember. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram was four score and six years old, and Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. And so I want to know what you have to say. If there's something that you found that I didn't talk about, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. If there's a question that you had that I didn't answer, put it in the comments down below. I'll be choosing some of them for this week's Q&A at the end of the week. And so uh, today, tomorrow's assignment, day 21, read Genesis 17, mark the word covenant. Also mark the word circumcised. List what you learn about Abram, Sarah, Sarai, Ishmael, and Isaac. And note Abram's age. And so, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like today's content. And share this video with other people in your life who want to understand the Bible, but they haven't been successful because they don't have the tools at their disposal. Introduce them to the tools, get them the answers to their questions, and let's do it in community here on YouTube. And so until next time, may God richly bless you.